My name is Shaji Kumar. I'm a professor of medicine and the division of hematology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. So bone marrow transplantation is a procedure that uh, is fairly uh, commonly done for treatment of hematological malignancies as well as some inherited disorders. Now there are two types of bone marrow transplantation or what we broadly call a stem cell transplantation. One is autologous which is using your own cells which is typically used for treatment of a variety of different uh, cancers. And then there's allogeneic stem cell transplantation, which is using a cells from a donor. It could be a related donor or somebody who could be totally unrelated to you, which, is, which can be used for treating a variety of different hematological cancers like leukemia, but also can be used for some inherited disorders like thalassemia. Um, and the technology is something that has evolved quite a bit over the years. And the autologous stem cell transplantation is fairly straightforward. It involves giving very high doses of chemotherapy to eliminate most of the cancer cells and then give your own stem cells back, um, which is collected prior to giving the chemotherapy. So that one is um, fairly straightforward and very commonly done for cancers, especially uh, cancers like multiple myeloma, which is a cancer of plasma, cell, uh, plasma cells and also for lymphoma. Those are the, probably the two most common indications for doing an autologous stem cell transplantation. In contrast, allogeneic stem cell transplantation is a lot more um, involved because it, in, it, it means you're giving the cells from a donor who could be one of your siblings or it could be um, an unrelated person but whose HLA matches with your own. And more recently, there are stem, the stem cell sources have become more varied, including using cord blood cells uh, which uh, again is, can be used much more um, um, easily or it does not have the same kind of restrictions that you have with an unrelated donor. Also there is increasing push towards using what we call a haploidentical donors uh, which are people who are only half matched. It could be a parent, your child um, or even um, your siblings but only half of this, uh, the proteins that we typically use for matching called HLA matches in that situation. So there's certainly more um, increased risk with allogeneic stem cell transplantation of complications compared to autologous stem cell transplantation. The biggest um, complication that we worry about with allogeneic stem cell transplant is the possibility that the cells that are, being, uh, that are coming in, the new cells can identify your body as foreign and sets up a reaction what we call a graft versus host disease. And that can sometimes be severe enough to uh, be life-threatening. The um, overall, the field of transplantation has significantly improved over the past few years as we understand the biology of many of these complications. And we also have lots of different drugs to keep the immune system under control and as well as other technology that helps us identify the immune cells that actually gets, gets rid of your cancer uh, rather than the immune cells that fight against your body so that we can differentiate between what you really need which is getting rid of the tumor and um, not, not worry as much about the graft versus host disease. Multiple myeloma is a cancer of the, predominantly of the older patients. Um, it's a median age is around uh, between 60 and 70, though in the Indian context it's probably a little, it appears to be young or maybe by a decade. Now it's a cancer that's incurable uh, with the current treatments and patients when they develop multiple myeloma, they can have bones that become weak and can fracture. Uh, they can also develop uh, kidney failure because of the, uh, the proteins that are being made by these cancer cells. Now the plasma cells, which is the origin of the myeloma uh, cancer, typically lives in the bone marrow. And uh, the cells produce a variety of different chemicals, including high levels of it, certain types of proteins, uh, which can cause all these problems, including the anemia, the kidney failure, as well as um, the bone disease that we typically see in this disease. Now. Um, the multiple myeloma, as I said, is incurable with the current treatments, but autologous bone marrow transplant or stem cell transplant is one of the most commonly used methods of treating multiple myeloma. And the problem is most of these patients are older, so only a, uh, about maybe 20 to 30 percent of patients are, are considered to be eligible to go through a stem cell transplant uh, for treatment of myeloma. But the patients who can go through a stem cell transplant, um, the procedure does keep the myeloma under control for um, two or three years um, and certainly has a, you know, a major role to play in the overall management. Now, as I said, the autologous stem cell transplant in myeloma, you collect the stem cells and then you give high doses of chemotherapy, typically something called melphalan, and then we basically reinfuse the stem cells. 
and the procedure can be done more than once uh, and sometimes it's done back to back to increase the intensity of therapy. But it, uh, the, the autologous stem cell transplant clearly has a role to play in myeloma. In contrast, allogeneic stem cell transplant, while it can sometimes lead to a cure of the disease, is associated with a lot of side effects and increased risk of dying from the complications. So we don't use the allogeneic stem cell transplant as much for treatment of multiple myeloma. The biggest problem in using uh, bone marrow transplant um, much more widely than what's currently used is one is the infrastructure that's needed uh, for collecting the stem cells, manipulating the stem cells if need be, and then um, you know, reinfusing the stem cells and dealing with the complications, both acute as well as the long-term complications. So let's take a look at each of those things. Um, the first one is getting those, the stem cells. Now, as I said, um, when you're talking about allogeneic stem cell transplant, you need the stem cells to come from a different donor. Now, the donor can be an unrelated person. It can be one of your own siblings, which is the easiest. If you have a sibling who has a good HLA match, then it's a matter of collecting the stem cells and doing the transplant. If you don't have a match sibling, then you have to go to one of the blood banks or the stem cell banks um, to cut, get the cells. Um, now, that involves quite a bit of expense, both in terms of trying to identify a donor and then getting the donor to donate the cells uh, for the transplant. The other option is to use cord blood cells. Now, cord blood cells is more easily available, but again, the cord blood banks are just being set up, uh, so that will also uh, entail some cost in actually getting the unit. The haploidentical transplants, uh, the donor is obviously uh, much more easily accessible, but again, there's cost involved in collecting the stem cells and then again storing and reinfusing it. But in, it's not just the cells, but once the transplant's done, patients have to be very closely followed uh, for complications such as the graft versus host disease and infections. Especially in the developing countries, managing infections can sometimes be quite a bit uh, difficult compared to the Western countries. And also um, use of antibiotics and immunosuppressive agents can also add to the cost of transplant because many of these drugs tend to be quite expensive. Now finally, if patients develop long-term chronic complications, especially chronic graft versus host disease, we are talking about patients needing lifelong therapy with uh, various medications, all of which can be pretty expensive. So I think the cost and the infrastructure are the two reasons why uh, bone marrow transplants cannot be used much more widely than what is being done now. So I think we are understanding a lot more about the biology behind the stem cell transplant. So we have uh, identified better ways to manipulate or um, get the stem cells or different components of the cells, um, especially the T cell components. Um, we can now uh, isolate different um, sets of T cells that can attack the tumor more than it attacks the, uh, the host. Um, so that is an improvement. We have, um, have better ways of trying to separate out tumor cells from the stem cells we collect. And we can also better identify um, smaller subgroups of cells which are more beneficial and we can expand them outside of the body and we can give them at different times to attack the cancer versus um, trying to make sure the, there's enough immunity for the patients to kind of help um, them against infections. So I think the stem cell transplant is a form of immunotherapy and I think immunotherapy in general is really expanding its role um, for treatment of cancers. So uh, stem cell transplants, one component, we also have made huge strides in understanding why the body's immune system is not able to attack the cancer cells and get rid of them. So a lot of the immune system that we have is kind of put to sleep by the cancer effect. Now, um, by identifying how the cancer communicates with the immune cells, we have been able to sometimes block that and make this, uh, can the immune cells more effective against the cancer again. So there's a lot of interest in immunotherapy, especially what we call a checkpoint inhibitors. Um, so what uh, there's a couple of molecules called PD-1 and PD-L1 which, uh, in, which is responsible for some of this inhibition of the immune system. So by using molecules, either antibodies or small molecules, which stop these uh, communication between the cancer cells and the immune cells, we can make those T cells more active again and uh, help us get rid of the immune system. Oh, sorry, help us get rid of the cancers. Now, there are other ways of harnessing the immune system. There are other ways we can manipulate the T cells. So there is a technology called CAR T cells. Uh, which is a chimeric antigen receptor T cells, where we basically repurpose the, the T cells or make them recognize the, uh, the cancer much more directly and at the same time also um, harness some of the other components of the immune system to get rid of the cancers. 
So the CAR T cells show significant promise, especially in some of the leukemias where we have more mature data and it's being expanded to include other cancers as well. Now there are other platforms what are called bite cells, uh, which again are modifications of T cells or modifications that allow the T cells to uh, identify the cancer cells more readily and try and uh, destroy them. So I think the immunotherapy is a field that is really coming to age.